nice to feel like I have some company actually. I'm living with my family, so I have company, but we're not, we're not going out. So it's nice to see some like friends coming home, basically. <laughs> so come and sit on the knees in this kind of position. We'll start slow so that we can warm up the body and work through this nice, uh, strong vinyasa practice. One thing to mention is if, if there's a pose that feels like this is just way too much for you, you can do one of the previous poses or one of the previous levels of the pose or rest in a child's pose or puppy pose. Anyway, you're at home. so. Do what feels comfortable for you. Okay, so come to sit with a long spine, hands on the legs. Listening to your breath. Making the inhales and the exhales the same length. to engage Mula Bandha and Uriyana Bandha, elongate the neck, and I think there might be somebody who has their speaker on, if you're not sure, just have a look. Relax the jaw. Relax the tongue in the mouth, all around the mouth. Relaxing around the eyes, behind the eyes, the forehead. So the whole face feels completely relaxed. Still keeping the rhythm the breath. Trying to engage Mula Bandha and Uriyana Bandha. Using the breath to slowly wake up the body. chest and lower the chin slightly and give a intention to your practice make it a personal intention for now so it could be anything such as I'm going to remain connected to my breath I'm going to allow my mind to settle. I'm going to enjoy this moment to be able to move and breathe. Or any other personal intention. your hands on the floor in front of you. Start to walk the hands forward. Come high on the fingertips. If you're making this cupping with your palms. Bring the ears between the upper arms. Reaching as far forward as you can with the fingertips. Just starting to feel a nice gentle elongation along the back body. 
Make sure you feel the two sitting bones slightly pulling towards one another. So you keep the foundation of Mula Bandha and then you can elongate out of the root. Then place the palms on the floor, bring them a little bit further back, and then you're going to come up onto the hands and the knees. Bring your wrists under the shoulders, the knees a little bit behind the hips, and then tuck the toes under. Have a look at the wrist, so you want the line of the wrist to be either lined up to the front of the mat or a little bit open. Okay, but not turning in. Press all ten fingers firm into the floor, all the pads of the hands at the end of the fingers into the floor, and then reach the sternum away from the floor so you feel like you're filling in the space between the shoulder blades. Keep the back of the neck long, and then finding Mula Bandha and Uriyana Bandha, keeping that strong base, that strong root at the pelvis, and then elongate the spine through the crown of the head from that foundation. Feel like you're making space between the vertebrae. Tune in with your breathing. And now we're going to do some kind of fluid movements, like a kind of mini sun salutation. So first you're going to inhale, open the chest, exhale, round the back, bring your sitting bones towards the heels. Inhale, slide forward, open the chest, exhale, rounding the back, coming back into kind of a puppy. Inhale, fluid movements, exhale, pull the navel in as you go back. We'll work a little bit more with the breathing. Inhale, exhaling. You don't have to necessarily go to your max, just feel like you're slowly waking up the spine, waking up the body. Trying to enjoy the simple movements of the body. And then coming back onto the hands and knees, slide the right arm under the left arm so the shoulder and the ear come to the floor, lifting up the left hand, wrapping it around and seeing if you can catch the opposite thigh. Relaxing here somewhat. Release the left hand back to the floor, pressing it into the floor, lifting up and sliding the left arm under the right. And picking up the right arm, reaching behind. Enjoying the feeling of deep breathing. And placing the right hand firm into the floor again. Coming back up. And inhale, open the chest. Exhale, coming back into that puppy pose. Staying here for a moment. Pick up your finger so that you're on the tips of the fingers and wiggle the tips of the fingers as far forward as possible and then press the whole palms into the floor. Reach the sitting bones in the opposite direction from the hands and feel that nice lengthening through the entire back body. Pull in the lower abdominals, engaging Uddiyama Bandha. From here, lean forward a little bit, pick up the knees, 
And then keeping the knees bent, you're going to press the hands in through the floor and reach the sitting bones in the opposite direction. Again, feeling like you're lengthening through the spine, pulling in those low abdominals, the place between the two hip bones. And then from there, maybe you work on straightening one leg, and you don't have to straighten it all the way, straightening the other, doing this slow, conscious pedaling from one leg to the other. Feel the lengthening of the side body and the torso, the sucking in around the navel. And then when you feel like you're ready, trying to still yourself into a version of downward facing dog. So have a look at the feet. The feet look like they're in a nice samastiti alignment. Feeling the firmness of the pads of the fingers and the hands pressing into the floor. So you feel the arch of the palm lifting away from the floor. Look between the hands, bend at the elbows, step one foot forward, other foot forward, inhale halfway up, long back, exhale, bend the knees, fold over. Inhale, lead with the chest, come all the way to stand, raising the arms, exhale, arms to the sides. And just start moving with the breath a little more, inhale, raise the arms, exhale, folding over the legs, the lower belly staying in. Inhale, open through the chest. Exhale, place the hands, step one foot back, other foot back, coming into this plank pose, knees, pelvis, chest to the floor. Turn the ten toes, press all ten toes to the floor, roll open the shoulders, press a little bit into the hands, Engaging the back body. Keep the elbows bent so the back body has to engage. Lower belly engaging. Turn the toes and either a puppy pose or a downward facing. Finding your alignment and then stilling the body. Listen to the breathing. I'm trying to allow the mind to still with the body and the smooth, even breathing. Bend the knees, step one foot, other foot, inhale, long back, belly in. Inhale, chest leads as you rise up. Exhale, samastiti. And again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, long back. Exhale, if you feel ready, you're going to lightly pop back, plank pose, staying here. Press all ten fingers into the floor, press the heels away from you, and try to fill in a little bit that space between the shoulder blades. Breathing, holding, swivel the skin of the upper arm so that they wrap towards the back of your mat. Lean forward and see if you want to come down all the way to the floor or halfway down. Inhale, you can also do the cobra or upward facing dog. Make sure you're listening to your body. Over the toes, downward facing dog. One. Two. Three. Four. Inhale, 
long spine. Exhale, head down. Inhale, open your arms, come all the way up. Exhale, Samastiti. And again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, lightly going back, staying in your plank pose. Elongate from the heels all the way through the crown. Wrap the skin of the upper arms towards the back of your mat. Feel like your neck is in line with the rest of the spine. And then, if you feel comfortable here, lift up your right leg. Lower it, lift up the left leg. Lower it and chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. One, tuning in with the breathing. Two,
Feel like you're reaching it away and then wrap the left ribs towards your leg. Straighten the back leg if possible or you're welcome to put the knee on the floor. Pick up the right arm. And release the hand. You're going to step the right foot back, left foot forward. Right hand under or around the shoulder or the face. Check that your inner arch is lifting up. This whole inner line has to lift up. Bring your left hand on the top of the thigh, drop that thigh, and then use that pressure to reach the crown in the opposite direction. And then start to rotate the right ribs towards your leg. And then maintaining that alignment, pick up the left arm. Breathing fully. Place the hand down, step back, and optional chaturanga. Inhale. Wow, everybody's doing it. Downward dog. Lift the heels, step the right foot forward. So this time you're going to start to lift the torso, soften the back knee, and then take your hand again in the groin here and push that down and feel like your skin of the sitting bone is wrapping towards the back of the knee. So this time we're going to see if we can hook our elbow on the outside of the knee. Press the elbow and the knee towards each other to get a little deeper twist. And so you're welcome to stay here or maybe you can reach that left arm around and bind behind the back. Once you find that, straighten the back knee. Open the chest. If possible, gazing to a point upwards. Pull the lower belly. And release the bind. Put the hands down. Right foot goes back. Left foot comes forward. Same thing. Lifting the torso. Lift the inner arch. Tuck that left skin of the sitting bone under. Feel the belly coming in. Push the left thigh. And then wrap yourself towards that right knee. You can stay with the elbow. Or maybe a little deeper maybe wrapping that arm. Whatever version you find, try to push the right heel away and see if you can straighten that leg. And release the hands, put them into the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhaling, open the chest. Exhaling over the toes. Staying here. Making sure that you can still control the breathing. So if you're losing control, you're welcome to put the knees down. Lift the heels high from the floor. Step your right foot forward again. Turn the back foot on the floor at an angle. And then keep your right fingertips on the outside of the foot and stretch your left arm over the ear. Parjva Konasana. Press into the feet. Inhale, come up. Straighten the front knee. Open the whole right side of the body. Like a reverse triangle pose. Keep that front leg straight. Start to extend out over that right leg, allowing the fingertips to come down. Left arm up, Trikonasana. Gazing to the upper thumb.
front knee. Still in like a trikonasana. And release the hands, put them to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Lift the heels high from the floor. Step your left foot forward. Turn the back foot on the floor at an angle. Left hand on the outside of the foot. Stretching the right arm over the ear. Parja Konasana, second side. Inhale, come up. Straightening that front knee. Reversed Trikonasana. Extending that last side of the body. Exhale, starting to extend over that front leg for a long trikonasana. Inhale, back up, bend the front knee. Extending out with the knee bent this time, wrapping around, seeing if you can bind behind you. Open the chest to the side. Squeeze the left buttocks. And release both hands to the floor, step back, and optional chaturanga. Inhaling and exhaling. Stay here once again, making sure you have control of the breath. Lift the heels, step the right foot to the right thumb, and then wiggle your fingertips forward and start to pick up that back leg, but look at the back leg, make sure it's straight, the ankle's straight, the knee's straight. See if you can bring it about level with your hips. And then from there, see if you can start to straighten the standing leg. Fingertips press into the floor and then open the chest. Like you're reaching the chest away from the floor. Should feel the lower abdominals pulling in. Now, start to open that left hip so it goes on top of the right hip. We're gonna come into a half moon. So right fingertips under approximately the shoulder and then pick up the left arm. Lower the hand. And then this time you're going to pick up that leg as far as it can go up towards the ceiling. Maybe you walk your fingertips back and fold over the front leg. And lower the foot. Step back. Change feet. Left foot forward. Lean forward. Look at your back leg. So the knee straight, the ankle straight. Start to pick up that leg. Try to keep it parallel with the floor, about hip level. Then, if that feels okay, start to straighten the standing leg. Feel the belly pulling in. And then fingertips are pushing to the floor, our chest is reaching away from the floor. You guys look great. <laughs> it's nice to see you all trying there. And then, bring the right hip over the left hip. See if you can bring some weight into your left hand and pick up your right arm for a half moon this side. And fingertips to the floor and the standing split, reaching those toes up towards the ceiling as you walk yourself towards that standing foot. Lower the foot, step back, and chaturanga. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, over the toes, breathing freely.
bend the knees, look forward, and step or hop forward, long spine, exhale, head down, inhale, Utkatasana, exhale, Samastiti. Everybody's okay? Do a thumbs up if you're okay. Nobody's dying? Yes. Okay, so. Utkatasana, inhaling, exhale, folding over, inhale, long back, exhale, jump back, lower down, inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing, lift your heels high from the floor, step your right foot forward, and then turn both feet so that the external sides of the feet are parallel. Bring the hands on the floor in front of you. And then push the hands away from the floor, lifting the chest. Then slide the hands back and place the crown of the head to the floor. Or not. <laughs> as, as whatever happens. So some of you who I know really love inversions, you can start to pick up your heels or just bring a little less weight onto the heels, press the hands, squeeze the elbows together, and see if you can pick yourself up into a headstand. Okay, so those are for the, the keen, I see a few there. Nice. I'm not doing it, <laughs> but I know you like it. And then slowly coming all the way down. Inhale, lift the chest high. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Exhale here. Inhale, open the arms to the sides. Turn the thumbs so they're pointing downwards. Bend down the elbows and see if you can place the hands into this reversed prayer position or hold the elbows or the wrists. So do what feels best on the wrists and the shoulders. Open the chest, exhale, folding here. Breathing, gaze to the nose. Press the feet. Release the hands, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Lift the heels high from the floor, step the left foot forward, and then turn so the outer edges of the feet are parallel. This time, step the hands forward, palms on the floor, like a wide-legged downward facing dog. So your arms are stretched forward, your sitting bones are still in line with the heels, and you're trying to extend the space between the crown of the head and the sitting bones. Extend the spine. Okay, so we're gonna do another arm balance for those who want to do arm balances. You slide the hands behind you, and then turn to the tops of the hands. So you're on the tops of the hands, like that, and you press and you bring your head to the floor, and you press the tops of the hands into the floor, engage the shoulder blades, and see if you can start to lift or make the weight in the heels a little bit lighter. And then for the few that really want to do it, I see, I see a couple of you. Amazing, strong, Strong people there. Wow. Okay. Just make sure you don't fall into your television. <laughs> okay. So from there, lower down with control. Slide the hands so they're onto the hips. Press the feet, press the fingers into the lower abdominals. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale. Inhale, separate the arms. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back. 
open the chest, belly in, exhale, folding over, allowing the arms to fall over the head. Breathing smoothly. Inhale all the way back up. And you're going to turn the heels so they're inwards a little bit. Okay? Just a little bit. Don't, don't do this extreme version, like something like that. Okay? It's not the best for the knees. So the heels are in, toes are pointing out. Bring the hands on the upper inner thighs and spread the inner thighs so that the knees are pointing to the second toe. Okay, so you can push into the hands, lower a little bit, and then open the chest. Then, if you can maintain the position of the legs, then you release the hands, open the chest here. And straighten the legs, turn the toes to the front of your mats, put the hands to the floor, step back, and lower down. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Bend the knees, gaze forward, and step or hop. Inhale, long back. Exhale, head down. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastihi. Bend the knees, pop the feet apart, hip width apart, open the chest. Exhale, folding down, taking the big toes. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, folding down. Let the head feel heavy so that you can elongate the space between each and every vertebrae. Now, you're going to lift the chest from the floor, put the left hand to the hip, lift your right heel from the floor, you can soften the left knee, so you need to find a steady gazing point to look at, Press into your left foot and see if you can lift your right leg up from the floor. Anchor your shoulder blades, soften the elbow, and use the arm to lift that leg a little bit higher. Bring your left hand on the outside of your right foot or right knee if your knee's bent, and open your right arm to the side. And if you can, you can change your gaze to the side or maybe even the back. Bring your hand forward, take your toe, and slowly all the way back down to the floor. Take both toes for a moment, open through the chest. Put your right hand to the hip, lift the left left heel from the floor, soften the knee, and then find a steady gazing point and press that foot. Oh, I see all of you are up. Lots of you are up already. Woo! Oops, losing my balance. Okay, and then use your shoulder blade. Anchor the shoulder blade. Soften the elbow and push, pull the leg a little higher with the strength of the arm. Bring your right hand on the outside of the foot and stretch your left arm out to the side. Left hand takes the toe again and slowly all the way down to the floor. Slide the hands under the feet. Open through the chest, lower belly in. Exhale, fold. Breathing deep. Feel the skin of the sitting bones just slightly wrapping downwards towards the back of the knees 
and make sure the lower abdominals are really reaching all the way up towards the ceiling. Skin of the neck reaching away from the floor and sternum reaching to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, all the way up to standing. And exhale, the feet together. So we're gonna do another standing balance. So you're going to find a nice samastidhi so you feel firm in both, both feet. And then start to open from the hip joint, the right leg, so the right knee is pointing out to the sides. Make sure you're getting longer through the spine, lower belly in. Squeeze the left buttocks. And then start to pick up that right foot. And then you're gonna cradle the ankle on either side of the ankle. Keep that ankle straight. And then reach the foot away. But as you're reaching it away, you're also pulling it towards you. So it's a little bit like a tug of war. Inhale, reach, whoops, I'm gonna fall. Reach the foot away. Exhale, pull it towards you, but don't let it come. Inhale, reach it away, lifting it a little higher each time. Exhale, pulling it, dropping, externally rotating that hip joint. And then close the back of the knee, place the foot on the upper inner thigh. Tree pose, both hips forward, hands in front of the chest. And then if you want, you can reach your hands up towards the ceiling and feel that nice lengthening on either sides of the waist. You can interlock the thumbs, pull the thumbs away, elongating the side bodies. And palms come down, and knee forward, foot down. Second side. So now you know what you're doing, it's a little easier. Squeeze the right side so your right buttock is firm. Turn your left knee out, both hip bones forward. Pick up that foot and then cradle your ankle. You're gonna inhale, reach the foot away. Exhale, feel like you're pulling the foot towards you. Keep externally rotating that upper hip. Opening, exhale towards you. Inhale, opening, make sure you're not hurting your knee. Exhale. And then close the back of the knee, place the foot on the upper inner thigh for a tree pose. Pull in the lower abdominals, elongate through the spine. And maybe the hands come up, maybe the thumbs hook, and then try to reach the thumbs away from one another, and then reach both sides of the waist so you feel like you're getting taller. And palms in front of the chest, knee forward, and foot down. Coming to the front of the mats. Just check the time so I don't want to like lose track. Okay, seems good. So now, don't be afraid of this one. Okay, so you're gonna bring the arms parallel with the floor and feel like your arms are pushing into something. So if you bring one hand under your wrist and you push that arm down. Okay, so when you do that, you feel like you're engaging under the arm here. Okay, so both arms like this. And you want to feel the shoulder blade area engaging. Keep the knees together, and you're going to start to bend the knees. Bend, bend, keep the knees together. Bending, bending, bending until up. Oh, you're in a squatting position. Okay, so I know this isn't going to be possible for everybody. So if that's not possible, separate the feet, and you can also bring your weight forward. If you got here, then you want to feel like you're buoyant, right? So my knees are pushing, my sitting bones squishing towards each other, and so that I feel like I can kind of move easily here. Bring the left fingertips behind you, elbow on the outside of the knee, and you could do a half knee, right? You could just do a half version. Okay, so press the elbow into the knee, 
and then squeeze the two sitting bones towards one another, lower abdominals in, and open the chest. And make sure you're not distorting your knees, okay, so that they're kind of going from one side to the other. Keep them straight. Fingertips into the floor, elbow pushing, open the chest, squeeze those two sitting bones, and maybe you go a little bit lower. Pressing the arm, pressing the knee towards one another. Feel like you're still that buoyant, like you could lift that back hand from the floor. That looks good. There's maybe one or two of you that could work on the bind if you want to go ahead. Nice. Woohoo. Alec. Cool. Okay, then we're going to come to the other side. So slide your fingertips behind you. Push into your hands. Squeeze the legs together. Feel this engaging of the pelvic floor, lower abdominals. I mean, <laughs> lower abdominals too, but I meant uh, the upper inner thighs. And then walk yourself forward, straighten your arms. And still feel like you have this capacity to kind of feel buoyant here. So the legs are really firmly pushing together. Slide your right fingertips behind you, elbow on the outside of the knee and then press the knee and the elbow towards each other and use it as leverage to open the chest. But you also need mula bandha, otherwise you don't have that opposing force. So bind mula bandha, press the elbow, and if that's okay, maybe you hook a little bit deeper, check you're not distorting the knees, pressing, opening the chest. And for the couple that did the bind, a few of you did the bind on the other side, so do that. Oh, I wish I could adjust you. My goodness, there's a couple that just need just this much. But you guys are doing amazing. Okay, and then release. Bring the hands in front. Press into the hands and boing, just go back. Chaturanga. Inhale. Open the chest, exhale, over the toes. So from downward facing dog, pick up the heels, so the heels are lifted high, press the hands into the floor and reach the sitting bones away from you. Now, looking at your right leg, start to lift the right leg and bring it in line with the rest of the spine. So don't open the hip, right? You're trying to keep the two hip bones wrapping towards one another. Breathing here. And then you're gonna, sorry, you're gonna lean forward, shoulders over the wrists, and then pull your right knee close to you and the forehead to the knee. And then reaching up. And then lean forward, bring the right knee on the outside of the right arm. and reaching back. Then wrap that right leg on the outside of the left arm. And reaching back. Lower the right leg. Lift the left leg. And then Pull the knee close to you, forehead to the knee. And stretching out. Then leaning forward, knee on the outside of the arm. And going back. And knee on the outside of the opposite arm. <laughs> you like to feel good and stretching and releasing, taking a couple breaths here. Okay, so we're going to step your right foot forward and come onto the heel. 
So there's going to be some different versions of this. You could put your back knee on the floor, fingertips on the floor, and open the chest. Okay, so everybody try that. See if you can straighten your front knee. Pull the belly in. If the front leg is straight and you're able to keep the spine long, then you start to soften up the elbows. But as you do so, that right hip, you need to keep space in the front of the right hip. So the right hip is reaching back, back, back as the chest comes down. And then lift the chest, put the hands to the floor, lift the back knee, step back, step the left foot forward. Lower the back knee, come high on the fingertips, open the chest, if it's possible, the front leg is straight. Of course, if that's, you don't want to compromise the spine, so if you feel like you're compromising your spine, you bend that front knee. Chest is open, top of that thigh is going back, lower belly is going back to be able to fold forward. Lift the chest, put the hands, step back. It's an optional chaturanga. Inhale, exhale. Okay, so we're gonna try to take that a little further. So if you know that you're quite tight and you have a big cushion beside you from your sofa or something, you can always use that. So you're gonna step your right foot forward onto the heel, fingertips beside you, both legs straight, open the chest. And then you're going to feel like you're dragging the feet towards one another. So you're feeling like you're gonna lift away from the floor, like you're doing this, like you're pulling that back leg back. Okay, so without it actually moving. So pull the right thigh back and left thigh forward. So you feel engaging. And then soften it. See if you can go a little deeper. And then again, pulling in. Squeeze the upper inner thighs. Pull your right leg back, left hip forward, engaging, engaging everything under there. And then relax it. How are you guys doing? Let's do one more, but if you're really just like, that's enough, you just sit and go into a child's pose or something. So pull the legs towards one another. Pull, 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 and then relax. And maybe there's a couple of you that are in the full position. If that's the case, point your back toes. And we're just going to walk ourselves forward and fold over that leg. And press into the hands, tuck the back toes. And so it's like the very first movement. You're pulling, dragging that heel behind you and stepping back. Optional chaturanga. Okay, so now you know what's coming. <laughs> Step the left foot forward. Fingertips under the shoulder area or in level with the shoulder. And then let's start. So even if you can do the splits, because I find that this is really, the resisting part is what I find more interesting. You know, when you can do the splits easily, it's more interesting to work on the resistance. So squeezing the upper inner thighs towards one another, I feel like it really strengthens my lower belly. And then softening. And then drag that front heel towards you. Pull the right thigh towards you. Squeezing in, squeezing in. <laughs> and then softening. Let's do one more like that. Squeezing in, engaging. For those who have done the teacher training, you're working on the P and F. Squeezing in, squeezing in. And then relaxing. And if possible, you're pointing the toes behind you and you can lean forward.
And then putting the hands to the floor, tuck the toes and pull that left, left hip, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, and slide it back. Lower down. Inhaling. Exhaling. So this time, look far away from you and you're going to hop through and come to sit. I'll face this way now. I think you can see my feet. Yes. So, straighten both legs out in front of you. Try to lengthen through the waist. And then slide to your left and pull that right leg back behind you. Okay? So it's like Triangle Mukai Kapara. Press the outer foot to the floor. And then bring your hands in the groins. And press the two sitting bones firm into the floor. Pick up the arms. Interlace your thumbs. And reach all the way up. Feel like you're getting a nice lengthening sensation through the belly. And then you're going to lean forward, keep pulling the belly in, keep squeezing the sitting bones, and keep pushing those right toes into the floor so that you don't tilt to one side. Reaching, 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 and then take a bind. Breathing here. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release. Coming up. So we're going to do Kramchasana. Bend your left knee and then bring your hand to your left sitting bone skin and you wrap your left sitting bone skin and actually both because it's a different pelvis movement than Triangle Mukai Kapara. So this is actually coming under. So we're going to work in steps. You're going to hold the back of your knee, lean back, open the chest, and then bring the shin parallel with the floor. Okay, so this might be enough for some of you. Pull the knee close to you. Check that that left sitting bone skin is wrapping up towards this knee. So it feels protected, the sitting bone. And then lower abdominals in, hips squared. Pulling that knee towards you, open the chest, and see if you, maybe you can work towards straightening the leg. Maybe pointing the toes up. have that, take your bind. Inhale, open like a V, and then exhale. You're using the arms to pull yourself, to pull your leg towards yourself. Soften that knee, bring it either on the foot on the inside of the thigh or the foot in a half lotus. Bring your left fingertips behind you, Push into the left fingertips to lift through the sternum. Bring the right hand under that opposite knee. Push into that right hand to get a little bit more length through the spine. If it's okay, you can bring your left hand behind you and take your toe. Just do any kind of spinal twist. Some of you look like, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? I can't do that. <laughs> so no problem. Just do any kind of twist that feels good for you. And then release. Okay, come. Well, you don't have to come straight. I have to come straight. Swivel your elbows, put the hands halfway down your thigh, push into your back toes, and ding, jump back. Chaturanga. Upward dog. Downward dog. And look way far forward and hop through to sit. You guys okay? Are you okay? Do some thumbs up because I'm getting nervous that you're just like killing. Okay, so second side. Lean to your right. Pull that left leg back. Check your toes are firm into the floor. The kneecap is pointing straight forward. Lengthen through the waist. Change the crossing of the thumbs and reach all the way up. Lengthen. You can let the arms come to the shoulders, come to the ears. It doesn't matter. Just reach, 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 reach. And then keeping this grounding. So the upper thighs, lower belly, toes pushing in, reaching forward, finding your bind. Trianga Mukai Kapara.
Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release. And bend that to me. And then feel like you're bringing, you're kind of tucking under the sitting bones. So you're a little bit more on the back of the sitting bones than the center of the sitting bones. Interlace your fingers behind that right thigh. Pick up the chest and bring the shin parallel with the floor. Okay, so I'm doing this for a few reasons. Is that when you close here, close this space, then when you straighten the leg, it gives you a little bit more elongation behind the leg. And it also gives you the opportunity, if you're not straightening the leg, to still be able to work on the pose. Here I feel my shoulder blades engaging. I feel like I have to engage my belly to sit up straight. So now, see if maybe you work towards straightening your leg or not. Okay, this is, it's different to hold the leg. Then maybe you bind. Open like a V and pull the leg towards you. And soften the upper knee, bring either the foot on the inside of the thigh, something like this, or over top of the thigh. Slide your hand under, underneath that other knee, wrap around, do any twist you want to do, open the chest, and twist towards your right. Gaze, finding a nice steady gazing point, steadying the mind. And then release. And if you want to jump back from that position, then you swivel the elbows, push the back toes, Lift the knees, put your hands forward, push the back toes, swivel the elbows, and all at the same time you jump back. And chaturanga, upward dog, downward facing dog. Going to lean forward into a plank pose, press your fingertips. Keep leaning forward, leaning forward, leaning forward until boop, you're on the floor. Come up onto the forearms. So like a sphinx pose. Tuck the toes and then press the heels away from you. Keep pressing the heels away so you feel your kneecaps lifting away from the floor. Then use your arms to pull the arms by pulling them back this direction so that the chest slides forward. Elbows the shoulder width. If there's any pinching in the back, walk your hands forward. Okay, so should never be pinching in the back. Okay, so chest is open. Feel like you're anchoring the shoulder blades onto the back. Open the chest. Push the pubic bone into the floor. Then lower the ribs to the floor. Bring your hands behind you, beside you. Press the palms into the floor. So palms down. If you're doing second series, it's going to sound weird. Press the heels, heels in the opposite direction. Press the palms to open the chest. And then point the toes. Now lift your hands. Bring your hands like a W position. Push the elbows to the floor and the tops of the hands towards the ceiling. Elbows to the floor, tops of the hands to the ceiling. Hands down. Push the hands upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Leaning forward, lowering all the way down to the floor, and do the same thing again. So coming up onto the forearms, toes touching, heels pressing firmly away, pull the arms towards you to slide the chest forward. Feel like the shoulder blades are going, getting kind of stuck on the upper back. Okay. Put the low ribs onto the floor. 
going to come back into these W arms and then bring the thumbs towards the back of the head. Don't interlace. Huh. I saw you all do what you would normally do. Don't interlace. Just leave them like they're just touching lightly. And then point the toes. Elbows push down, backs of hands push up. And then put your thumbs on the occiput and push your thumbs into the occiput and push your head towards the thumbs. Put the hands beside you. Upward dog. Downward dog. Pedal the feet. Elongate the spine. We're going to do another back bend. So if your back is feeling a little bit like this is a bit too much for it, then you can go into a child's pose or a puppy pose. Or do a simpler back bend that feels better for you, that you know works for you. We're staying on the belly for now. Leaning forward. Slowly coming down to the floor. Coming on to the forearms. Hold the hands toward you. Slide the chest away. Check the chin is slightly tucked in. Okay, now you're going to bend your knees. Keep the knees a little bit apart, but flex the feet. And then bring the feet together. So the feet are touching and flexed. Slide the hands, pull the chest away, and press the pubic bone into the floor. Okay, not with all your might, <laughs> but just slightly. Okay, to activate Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Then, let the low ribs come to the floor. Feel like your heels are going to reach towards your buttocks. Slide your hands behind you. Interlace your fingers and reach your hands away. So the heels are trying to reach the buttocks and the hands are trying to reach the wall behind you. If your hands touch easily, you get your ankles. Okay, now here, pull your feet away from your hands and then wrap your shoulders forward. Okay, so you're working with this opposing force and then see if you can lift the knees up towards the ceiling. Keep pulling the feet away from you and the heads of the shoulders in the opposite direction. And lower down. Inhale, upward dog. And everybody's coming to this puppy pose. So tuck the toes under, come to the fingertips, Bring the sitting bones towards the heels and walk your fingertips forward. Let the palms come to the floor, gluing the palms to the floor as you reach the sitting bones away. Point the toes and come into a child's pose with the arms forward for the moment. And then slide the arms beside you for a traditional child's pose. And just allow the heart Beat to slow down a little bit, allow the breathing to slow back down. You can kind of wiggle a little bit side to side if that feels comfortable. Relaxing the upper back, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the lower back. And then slide your hands forward, coming into a chaturanga, into an upward facing, and into a downward facing. Place the knees on the floor, keep the toes tucked, 
Interlace the fingers, make a triangle with the arms, put that triangle on the mat, and then keep the head off the floor, but the neck long. Pick up the knees one centimeter. Push the elbows, push the wrists into the floor, and then leading with the lower belly, reach the lower belly up towards the ceiling. Relax the back of the neck, relax the palate, Keep pushing the arms into the floor. Feel like your shoulder blades are going to get onto the back. Then wiggle your toes towards you and maybe the head comes down. But you don't have to do the headstand. So if you're not feeling comfortable, stay there and just work on the dolphin. Otherwise, see if you can start to slowly pick up the feet. And then you're going to bring the legs so that they're parallel with the floor so you can see the tips of the toes. Press into the arms so you can lift the legs all the way back up. And then see if you can lower down with control, slowly, 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 and bring yourself back into a child's pose. Releasing the neck, releasing the upper back, releasing the shoulders, letting the whole body, the whole back body release towards the floor, release into the front body. Slide the hands in front of you, push into the hands, roll yourself up to a sitting position. If it's comfortable, you're going to stay in this sitting position. If it's uncomfortable, you can come to another one or sit on a block or a bolster. And then we're going to bring our right arm in front of us at an angle. Left arm's going to wrap over the right arm, intertwining the forearms, pushing the palm. And if that's really difficult, you could do something like this. Just keep the arms apart and reach the elbows up. Elbows go up. Hands push away, close the eyes, start to cool down the body, feel the skin of the neck sliding away from the ears, relaxing the jaw, the tongue, the mouth, the whole face. And make sure you're still doing the nice soft sound ujjayi. And then round the back, Bring the elbows towards the navel. Let the hands drop, let the head drop. Stretching out the upper back. Lifting the head. Lift the elbows. And then straighten the left elbow. Drop the left shoulder blade, and you're going to use the right arm to pull the left arm to the side. So you maybe you feel a little lengthening along that arm. Then you're going to hug yourself. Hug yourself, bring your fingertips behind you, and see if you can use your fingertips to kind of find any kind of sensitive place that needs a little massage behind the shoulder blades. Not to mention it's just nice to have a hug, <laughs> especially for some of you who are in isolation on your own. Close the eyes. And then release the arms. Bring the left arm up at an L shape. Bring the right arm over, intertwining the forearms. Lengthen the neck, release the jaw. Push the hands away and pick up the elbows. You can kind of 
move up and down a little bit and just find the place that you feel is the best for you to stretch. Tuning in with the breathing. if you want to stretch the upper back and the neck. If you go too low, you kind of miss that opportunity. And coming back up, straightening the right arm, anchor the right shoulder blade, and slide. the arms. Come to sit on one side of the heels. Bring the legs forward and coming into a comfortable sitting position. So you're welcome to sit on a blanket or block or anything that you might have at home that's comfortable for you. Closing the eyes. Bring the arms in a way that they can Relax on the legs so that the legs take the weight of the arms, the weight of the shoulders. And bring your mind to Mula Bandha, so to the two sitting bones, the pubic bones, and the tailbone. And see if you can bring those four points just slightly towards one another. And when you get it, you have this feeling like you're able to sit a little bit taller. And then automatically, the lowest part of the abdominal area feels like it firms in as well. And you see if you can maintain Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Start to bring more attention to the breathing. Keeping the sound of Ujjayi. Feeling the whole thoracic area moving with the inhales, moving with the exhales. Take your hands, place them over the ears, and continue doing ujjayi, feeling that calming sound to the nervous system.
eyes closed. Keep that peace within as you slowly come to lie down in a final resting pose. Shavasana. You can take a blanket or a sweater. Once you're there, bringing the awareness to different parts of the body, and trying to release those places as the awareness is there. So starting with the feet and the toes, feeling the feet and the toes, and just allowing them to release. Allowing the toes to hang out to the sides. And bringing the awareness to the shins and the calves and the ankles. Feel like you're able to melt all the flesh from the bones and just melt, melt. torso starts to release. Relaxing the shoulders. Bringing your mind to the shoulders from the inside. And notice if you can relax them from the inside out. See if you can feel like the bones are heavy. And all the muscle is just melting away from the bones. Relaxing the hands. All the fingers feel completely relaxed. Bringing the awareness to the back of the neck and the throat. Trying to release the muscles in all this area, including the back of the skull, the occiput, the place where the cervical enter into the skull. 
you need. To eventually make your way into a sitting position, trying to keep the eyes closed. You're welcome to stay there as you're at home. You could stay there for another half an hour or so. Could be nice. Otherwise, we're going to come up and bring the hands in prayer. I'm going to chant the closing mantra of Ashtanga because I think it's a mantra that's very needed at the moment. It's always needed, but particularly right now. There's so many people that are afraid, so many people who are ill, all of us who are being affected by this uh, coronavirus. Even if subtly, I think on our consciousness, when you go into meditation, you feel like you are being affected. Even if it's on a very light way, we're going to send peace, happiness, love out to all beings everywhere, including ourselves. We can 
and chant the mantra with me at the same time. Thank <laughs> you.